just after the abrogation of article 370 and 35a many mainstream politicians of jammu and kashmir were detained or kept under house arrest although many of them were later released including safuddin soz one of the prominent faces in kashmir's politics today we are joined by mr safuddin soz mr soz saab thank you so much for joining badgam chronicles free wheeling conversation i'll just begin with the basic question first of all you are a free man now so what next um, um, um you see i learned about my freedom from the constable uh, the guard here only the day before yesterday so i am free after the incarceration mm-hmm. i had done nothing yet i was incarcerated i have a feeling of distrust against the union of india against this government what was my fault i am a citizen i respect constitution of india yet i was put under house arrest while all others have compromised i want to raise my voice i raised my voice that this was illegal this was unconstitutional and i might continue to do that because i want to raise a question what had i done uh, that i was put under house arrest why civil liberties were suspended for me Mm-hmm. Sir, uh, after one year down the line of 5th of August 2019, why do you see the situation of Kashmir as of now, where it is going now? You see, uh, there is the kind of peace which is actively lull, but the BJP General Secretary or anybody who comes uh, to this place is representing the Union of India. either the bjp rss uh, uh combination or the government it is one or the same he or she will is never a woman came here representing uh, the government or the bjp rss uh, combined some general secretary will come he say everything is calm and everything is uh, normal after abrogation of five um august 5 abrogation of 370, 370 mm-hmm. on august 5 19 everything is not normal there is a lot of you see deep anger in the heart and mind of kashmiris mm-hmm. i am part of that and they remained you see self imposed under self imposed lockdown under the lockdown imposed by the government uh, for some time so they are angry and they can't get happy by the day and that is the situation in kashmir so as of now what makes kashmir is angry like you are saying everything angry is normal because they had entered into an agreement with the union of india mm-hmm. the so called delhi agreement mm-hmm. and before that there was a constitution of jammu and kashmir so we carved out a constitutional relations with the union of india mm-hmm. we accepted to india and it was conditional that is there those conditions are there but yet the union of india will not abide by those conditions and take unilateral decisions so 370 had not to go because it was an instrument of trust mm-hmm. they have broken the instrument of trust itself so what next what next is that people are angry and this will continue elections will come and go but the people will remain angry and this is not a good omen for the union of india so will you be fighting for the restoration or revival of 370 or the statehood on jnk K- kashmiris are fighting what else they are doing there is a hartal there is anger and people of kashmir are angry united nations knows it so many agencies uh, involved in human rights protection activities of human rights protection in america in europe they know what is happening here mm-hmm. if the government of india or this government adopts an ostrich approach mm-hmm. nothing pertains to us they will be wrong because people of kashmir will remain angry so when it comes to the congress party like uh, uh, so are they going to you know uh, tackle with the situation in future or are they going to you know fight for the restoration of statehood in jammu and kashmir is a congress party uh, in respect of 
situation here is an institution um, which you cannot uh, describe in the same manner in which you uh, describe the mainstream in Kashmir. Congress is an all India situation. If you tell me, I will say it is a situation of relief in the minds of millions of India because it is a Congress party which will promote secularism, which will promote togetherness, which will promote uh, pluralism. There is no other party. So it is a great hope for India, whole of India, including Kashmir. But as per Congress, uh, it's this party's application to Jammu and Kashmir state, its role is uh, uh, not very large as compared to National Conference, as compared to People's Conference, as compared to uh, PDP, because they are the regional parties. Mm -hmm. It often hap happens in today's India that regional parties are more uh, uh, are in uh, uh, dense uh, relationship with that state, mm -hmm. regional parties, not the uh, all India level party. So since there is no special power in the in the Jammu and Kashmir and you know the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir in future, are you aiming to contest in the elections? Elections come and go. Congress party will be party to that election, National Conference or PDP. But that will not show, that will not be exact measure of the agony that the people of Kashmir are carrying in their minds. Mm -hmm. So, agony and uh, alienation is an, another situation. Participation in elections is another situation. People of Kashmir wisely think that elections are needed, that they have some needs uh, in respect of civic amenities. They want a, uh, you see, drain to be dug, they want a road to be repaired, they want an electric pole to be raised. So they are their, these are their needs, immediate needs. So for that elections will be held and people will participate up to a level. But if you say they are very pretty happy, they are not pretty happy, they have agony in their mind, heart and mind. So can we say that Congress party has really lost its ground in Kashmir and Thank you. Nee, what can I do about it? When I was president, I tried to promote it. It's a good idea. And All India Congress is a great hope because BJP, RSS are disruptionist forces. Congress is a unifier, is a great hope. It will stand for democracy, it will stand for democratic practices, it will stand for pluralistic politics, it will stand for togetherness of mankind. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you apply it here, uh, it, it doesn't remain a big force because here is the main city with National Conference, PTP, uh, People's Conference, etc. And then side by side Congress. Congress has a good pronounced position in Jammu, but in Kashmir its position is uh, rather not weak, but uh, comparatively uh, it is a, a situation it is uh, it has a secondary importance mm -hmm. because the main stream is national conference uh, pdp and uh, mm -hmm. people's conference mm -hmm. party b all right uh, it will do something all right so let's get back to the day when you were under house arrest and you mentioned that you are going to sue the government of jammu and kashmir for your you termed it as an unlawful house arrest or yeah so i had already happened. sued my lawyer was uh, Mr. Singhvi. But the day before yesterday, I informed him that I am a free citizen. So there is no case before the Supreme Court. But earlier Supreme Court did not come full circle in justice to me. Because they accepted untruth. Government of India and Government of Jammu and Kashmir said, so this is a free man. Mm -hmm. Supreme Court accepted that. Mm -hmm. eh? Did not raise question. It could have, in my day, it could have asked me to appear before the Supreme Court. So, in some major people think Supreme Court all the time uh, thinks that benefit of doubt must go to the government, mm -hmm. whether state government or central government. So, uh, I read Rohit Kansal's tweet, Principal Secretary, he, he, he said in one of his tweets, he said, Mr. Safadin Soh's former MP and minister not under house arrest or detention. He has been to Delhi twice in October and December, free to go wherever he likes with the usual security drill, no question of lying to Supreme Court. No, no, it is a lie. 
mm-hmm. rather white lie. Mm-hmm. I went to Delhi with permission of the police department. Okay. So two days once, three days once, mm-hmm. I went there. Yeah, that is true. But I was a free man. Not you see, uh, uh, always since five fifth August nineteen. It is recently two or three days ago that the same God told me that I was a free man. Mm-hmm. So I have to go out. But where is that jeep? And with four PSOs, they have not restored that. How can you go out? Because I am a protectee. Mm-hmm. So they are playing a double, double, you see, a double faced game. Mm-hmm. Up and but but this is what he said is untrue. What I say is correct. Are you fearing for your security, sir? No security is there. But there is a guard. Security is my people here. But I can't go out because a vehicle a security, some security. Must be restored to me. All right. So I was reading one of your interviews with one of a prominent newspapers in India, where you mentioned that domicile law certificates in Kashmir are fraud. What's your take on this? No, they are indulging in fraud, because during this time they must not touch those issues, which have very vital, very important repercussions for society, like domicile. They must leave it to an elected government. This is not an elected government. Mm-hmm. This is not a representative government. This is a makeshift arrangement, temporary arrangement, installed by government of India. It has no people's representative to talk to. It doesn't. You see, uh, it is not in conversation with us, with anybody in the main city. Mm-hmm. It has no right to take decisions on domicile. It's a very important law, mm-hmm. and they have already already issued lakhs of certificates. Mm-hmm. It is questionable. And when there is an elected government, him, that I will be the person telling that government, you finish it all certificates. Mm-hmm. So, and, mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, what people think it is sectarian government taking taking sectarian you see decisions, and in Jammu they they issued thirty lakh you see certificates in Kashmir four lakhs. I don't know to whom they issued certificates in Kashmir. It is doubtful. It is suspicious, and they will suffer for it. They will not be part of the dialogue with the people. They will never have a good discussion. Mm-hmm. Number dar or tasil dar or anybody will talk to the people. That is temporary. They can't talk to the people. People will not come forward in talking to the government out of their own volition. Mm-hmm. So they are that way causing disruption. In the discussion and dialogue, which is always the hallmark of democracy. Mm-hmm. So, talking about the media in Kashmir in general, do you think after the abrogation of 370 in Jammu and Kashmir, like the media is being like lo- is censored as of now? So, journalists are not being freely allowed to go anywhere or, and cover their professional duties. I have an idea in my mind that journalists are no longer free under this dispensation. To record what they hear, or to say what they want to. So, if people's voice is muzzled, in that major, the voice of, uh, you see, media is also muzzled. Mm-hmm. There is no doubt about it. We don't have a feeling that is a democratic setup. Mm-hmm. All right. So you are saying there is no democratic set- setup at all in Kashmir. Yeah, they are not not in working condition. Not not, uh, you see, currently working. Vigorously. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, one my, uh, I mean, last question. I want to know, like, Mr. Farooq Abdullah and Justice Hasnain Masoodi have not resigned from their, you know, party cadreship. So, what's your take on this? Since many leaders have resigned, uh, I have a feeling that their resignation would not prove anything. Mm-hmm. You know, one, one Mr. Karra resigned and did not do since then anything which is tangible with the people. He was not. He did not remain active. Did not explain his position. His resignation does not mean anything. It is not myself. So, so ever met me, they don't even remember. Try to remember Mr. Kara, or his resignation. It, it didn't mean anything. Since then, he is not active politically. But therefore, you see, therefore, I don't say national council leaders should resign, but they must be active. Mm-hmm. 
in the same way, if they, if they raise a voice, the next day they say Bharat Mata Ki Jai, it doesn't work well. Bharat Mata Ki Jai is the slogan of RSS BJP. Marana Azad and Jawala Nahru um, and others uh, said Jai Hind. There is world of difference between Bharat Mata Ki Jai and Jai Hind. Mm -hmm. These are, you, you understand what is what. The Bharat Mata Ki Jai means slogan raised by RSS in uh, vociferously. Mm -hmm. Jai Hind is a slogan, democratic and uh, sober. It is always raised by Congress party. Mm -hmm. I am giving an idea, even the, even the conversation you have, you are measured by people, what you stand for. I st we stand for democracy. We stand for togetherness mm -hmm. of mankind. We stand for pluralism. And Congress party at the center is doing that. As for this Congress party, it has a limited role because it is not as vibrant in the main stream as for instance, main stream regional parties, mm -hmm. National Conference, PDP, Apni Party in some major, and uh, People's Conference. Mm -hmm. Congress should should try to raise public issues, but uh, I have a feeling that it is not as much vibrant as National Conference. Do you think that it's playing a soft politics in Kashmir? Like? No, as the circumstances develop, I don't attach importance to it. Because even if it had raised, people would not accept that mm -hmm. wholly. Congress party has larger presence in Jammu. Mm -hmm. They are doing their job. It has some presence here, uh, which was marred by rec recent resignations, mm -hmm. Shweb, Lone and Usman, Mujid, uh, so many people. Mm -hmm. So, Congress has a limited scope in Kashmir, mm -hmm. greater scope in Jammu. But Congress party is doing its bit. I, I feel satisfied. But I don't give a con Congress party a bigger role than National Conference, than PDP, than uh, uh, Sujad Lone's party. Since you're a prominent face in Kashmir's, uh, you know, Congress party in Kashmir, so are you in touch with the center, I mean, Congress party, when it comes to the restoration of RT, statehood in Jammu and Kashmir or 370? Statehood restoration is no urgent matter. Mm -hmm. Today or tomorrow they will do it because they they must be feeling ashamed. A big state, they, they, they reduced it to union territory. But the real question is they have to restore our special position. Mm -hmm. Kashmiris will never compromise. Myself or anybody outside, I am with the people of Kashmir. They feel a situation of hurt in their heart and mind because special status was taken away. Status has to be re restored. That is the cornerstone of our constitutional relationship with India. Mm -hmm. They have weakened that corner cornerstone. So are you hopeful for that, that they will restore this? Yes, as a uh, living person, as a part of um, mainstream here, I feel they will have to do And if not, what would be the Congress's role? This is again my question, like I want to raise. You no, know, sometimes I feel I have a dual position. I am a citizen of Kashmir and sharing the agony in the heart and mind of Kashmiris. I am part of that. Mm -hmm. But and I have another position, I am a congressman. Here is a limited role. But uh, I am connected with uh, Congress at the center. Congress is a great hope there. Here Congress has a limited role. In that limited role, I have raised my voice. As a Kashmiri and simultaneously I am a congressman. If Congress can derive some benefit out of it, let them do it. Mr. Sos, thank you so much for having this freewheeling conversation with Badgam Chronicle. Thank you. So in this interview, you heard Safuddin Sos talking about the restoration of statehood in Jammu and Kashmir. He also stressed upon the media censorship in Jammu and Kashmir and how journalists are not performing their duties despite media censorship. With video journalist Fazl Rahman, this is Zia Shakir reporting for Badgam Chronicle, Humham and Clay. Please like, share and subscribe Badgam Chronicle page to get video notifications and daily updates.